how morbid is that to see your own companion killed, turn into a weapon, and used against you? Aloha, everybody. My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator and host of podcasts across worlds. In this video, we're going to do a recap slash review on Tsuki Michi moonlit fantasy episode 24 season 2 sorcerer versus draconid the episode opens with a high stakes double feature outside the castle shiki faces off against the formidable lancer while inside makoto continues his duel with the cunning sophia we see shiki in his imposing lich form wielding his transforming weapon Initially, it seems like Shiki dominates the fight, setting traps and outsmarting Lancer. However, the truth is revealed. Shiki was actually weaker. His victory hinged on meticulous planning and capitalizing on Lancer's underestimation. He wins by hair's breadth with a surprise attack showcasing his strategic brilliance and resourcefulness. To pull off his plan, Shiki reveals his human form to Hibiki and her party. This moment adds a layer of intrigue, leaving them wondering about his true identity. Additionally, Shiki demonstrates his healing abilities, further solidifying his impressive skill set. Actually, no. Okay, the episode opens with a high stakes double feature. Outside the castle, Shiki faces off against the formidable Lancer, while inside, Makoto continues his duel with the cunning Sophia. We see Shiki in his imposing lick form, wielding his transforming weapon. Initially, it seems like Shiki dominates a fight, setting traps and outsmarting a Lancer. However, the truth is revealed. Shiki was actually weaker. His victory hinged on meticulous planning and capitalizing on Lancer's underestimation. He wins by hair's breadth with a surprise attack, showcasing his strategic brilliance and resourcefulness. Now, his strategic brilliance and resourcefulness is also connected to the sword he made. He spoke with Lute. Root, Luto, Root, however you want to say his name, to gain more information about Lancer. And so he made a sword specifically to fight Lancer. And in my opinion, after training with Makoto, Tomoe, and Mio, of course he would have the strength and abilities to fight another dragon because I think Tomoe is stronger than Lancer. I'm just saying. Now, to pull off this plan, Shiki reveals his human form to Hibiki and her party. This moment adds a layer of intrigue, leaving them wondering about his true identity. Because when he first appears to Hibiki and her party, he's in his lich form, right? And Makoto, he's like in this like common Rider Zentai kind of outfit to hide his identity too. So to pull off the plan against Lancer, Shiki reveals his human form. And then they're like, whoa, what? And I can totally tell that when the girls in that party were like, he's handsome. But anyways, so he shows that he has a human form. And if they've been to Makoto's store, they would totally recognize him if they've seen him there. And earlier, Shiki did mention that Hibiki's sword is from the Kuzunoha's training company. So I'm thinking Hibiki is starting to connect the dots little by little. And I'm very excited about this because Hibiki is Makoto's senpai. They know each other. So I'm totally anticipating the time when they actually see and talk with each other. Especially since Makoto, 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 blah, 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 Makoto can now talk to humans. Now, additionally, Shiki demonstrates his healing abilities, further solidifying his impressive skill set to Hibiki and her party. And by saying that he demonstrates his healing abilities, he literally heals a hole in one of Hibiki's companion's stomach. Like, this person was going to die. 
Like not even their healer in her party could do it. And just showing that a glitch could heal someone else, that was very, very impressive. Meanwhile, Sophia, facing defeat against Makoto, unleashes her hidden powers. After Lancer is defeated, she absorbs his powers and his lifespan. She transforms into a powerful draconic form, drawing upon the strength of the dragons she's absorbed. This desperate maneuver highlights her immense power and the strength she'll go to achieve victory. She sort of opens up Lancer's prison of swords. It's like another dimension where he holds his swords because not because the explanation of that is Lancer collects swords and it's not just swords. Whoever he defeats, if he finds them powerful enough, he transforms them into a sword and he utilizes that as a tool or weapon. Now, to give an example, during the fight between Shiki and Lancer, Lancer unleashed a barrage of swords and one of the swords was going towards the priestess that was healing or trying to keep one of the companions alive and someone else in the party blocks it blocks the sword actually gets pierced by it and becomes a sword for lancer how morbid is that to see your own companion killed turn into a weapon and used against you that is like mentally psychologically and emotionally like i don't know scarring imagine your friend being turned into sword and aimed at you to kill you do you block it or do you think of it as your friend you know what i mean so anyways in this prison of swords all these swords were former heroes that's it's like a graveyard Actually, in my reaction, which is available on Patreon, I mentioned that the swords that look like a graveyard reminded me of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Seeing those keyblades all scattered about. Keyblades of former keyblade wielders, you know? Anyways, I'm kind of getting, getting off topic. So anyways, in this prison of swords, despite the odds, Makoto remains on Based. Utilizing his exceptional Kai sensing ability, he identifies the swords in this strange dimension that Sophia brought them in. He senses that the swords are her lives. Her life? Life force? Each sword is a life. So he then unleashes a barrage of arrows with different effects, weakening her with each hit. This display shatters Sophia's perception of him as just a sorcerer, revealing his true mastery as an archer. It was really cool to see this because that is his strength. That's his specialization. He is an archer. And this whole time, Sophia and Lancer thought he was just a sorcerer. They kept calling him the sorcerer, the sorcerer this, the sorcerer that. And then when he... We feel that he had solid mana and he could do like melee attacks and whatnot. They thought he was like a warrior. But no, 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 no. He was actually an archer. Mm hmm. Defy all what they thought was real. <laughs> the episode reaches a climax as Makoto utters a cryptic phase, phrase, phase, phrase, phrase. Luto, you owe me one before seemingly defeating Sophia. It's unclear whether he truly killed her or spared her life. This cliffhanger leaves us with a multitude of questions. Sophia's fate, Makoto's growing reputation, and the potential resurrection of Kalinian. Now, the aftermath. With Fort Stella destroyed, and the demon army's base in ruins, the stage is set for a dramatic aftermath. Hibiki starts piecing together the puzzle, connecting the dots between Shiki, the Sentai, and the Kuzunoha train company. 
Additionally, the episode leaves us pondering the impact of Makoto's actions on the political landscape. And what I mean by that is the goddess asked Makoto to help with Fort Stella. So Makoto, at the end of the episode, shoots out an arrow towards Fort Stella, destroying the demon army's base. So now that era is free for the humans, right? And then before that, Makoto and everybody else with his training company was helping the humans recovering from the demons' attacks. And then we got Hibiki, who's like piecing things together. Are they going to link up with Makoto or are going to wait for like episodes, chapters later to see their reunion? And then there's the Kalanian area where two of Makoto's friends are from. He's put them in the demi plane. He has put them in the demi plane to prep them to take over that area. How long is that going to take? And what's going to happen later on? And that's our review slash recap on Tsukimichi Moonlit Fantasy Season 2, Episode 24. What did you guys think about the episode? And what did you think about this video? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, share it. And if you want to see more, subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. If you'd like to dive into more anime and manga, we host podcasts across worlds. What is number one podcast for anime and manga? We interview people in the anime industry. So if you're interested in that, link to the podcast is in the description. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this is the Superfina channel doing a recap slash review on Tsuki Michi Moonlight Fantasy Season 2, Episode 24. Hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Ahoy ho!